We at Vlog Road believe strongly in the value of lifelong learning. We believe that there is always something new to learn and that our educational journey should never end. And it appears that we are not alone in thinking this way. History is filled with visionaries who had firm beliefs in the value of education. So, we decided to share with you a book that might impact your life for good. The name of the book is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. In his classic book, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, a non-Muslim shared the story of patience as virtue of Prophet Muhammad, PBUH, the last prophet based on a review by Thomas Sagru. It was also printed in the Herald Tribune in the 1930s. Here is an excerpt. The Last Great Prophet, Muhammad, PBUH, book reviewed by Thomas Sagru. Muhammad, PBUH, was a prophet, but he never performed a miracle. He was not a mystic, he had no formal schooling, he did not begin his mission until he was 40. When he announced that he was the messenger of God, bringing word of the true religion, he was ridiculed and labeled a lunatic. Children tripped him and women threw filth upon him. He was banished from his native city, Mecca, and his followers were stripped of their worldly goods and sent into the desert after him. When he had been preaching 10 years he had nothing to show for it but banishment, poverty and ridicule. Yet before another 10 years had passed, he was dictator of all Arabia, ruler of Mecca, and the head of a new world religion which was to sweep to the Danube and the Pyrenees before exhausting the impetus he gave it. That impetus was threefold, the power of words, the efficacy of prayer and man's kinship with God. His career never made sense. Muhammad was born to impoverished members of a leading family of Mecca. Because Mecca, the crossroads of the world, home of the magic stone called the Kaaba, great city of trade and the center of trade routes, was unsanitary, its children were sent to be raised in the desert by Bedouins. Muhammad was thus nurtured, drawing strength and health from the milk of nomad, vicarious mothers. He tended sheep and soon hired out to a rich widow as leader of her caravans. He traveled to all parts of the Eastern world, talked with many men of diverse beliefs and observed the decline of Christianity into warring sects. When he was 28, Hadija, the widow, looked upon him with favor and married him. Her father would have objected to such a marriage, so she got him drunk and held him up while he gave the paternal blessing. For the next 12 years Muhammad lived as a rich and respected and very shrewd trader. Then he took to wandering in the desert, and one day he returned with the first verse of the Quran and told Hadija that the Archangel Gabriel had appeared to him and said that he was to be the messenger of God. The Quran, the revealed word of God, was the closest thing to a miracle in Muhammad's life. He had not been a poet, he had no gift of words. Yet the verses of the Quran, as he received them and recited them to the faithful, were better than any verses which the professional poets of the tribes could produce. This, to the Arabs, was a miracle. To them the gift of words was the greatest gift, the poet was all-powerful. In addition the Quran said that all men were equal before God, that the world should be a democratic state Islam. It was this political heresy, plus Muhammad's, PBUH, desire to destroy all the 360 idols in the courtyard of the Kaaba, which brought about his banishment. The idols brought the desert tribes to Mecca, and that meant trade. So the businessmen of Mecca, the capitalists, of which he had been one, set upon Muhammad, PBUH. Then he retreated to the desert and demanded sovereignty over the world. The rise of Islam began. Out of the desert came a flame which would not be extinguished a democratic army fighting as a unit and prepared to die without wincing. Muhammad had invited the Jews and Christians to join him, for he was not building a new religion. He was calling all who believed in one God to join in a single faith. If the Jews and Christians had accepted his invitation Islam would have conquered the world. They didn't. They would not even accept Muhammad's, PBUH, innovation of humane warfare. When the armies of the Prophet, PBUH, entered Jerusalem not a single person was killed because of his faith. When the Crusaders entered the city, centuries later, not a Muslim man, woman or child was spared. But the Christians did accept one Muslim idea the place of learning, the university. For those of you who want to seriously work towards the attainment of their financial goals must give this book a listen. I thoroughly enjoyed it, hope you will too. Happy listening. Think and Grow Rich Audiobook